Well, hello there, everybody. It's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I am going to be showing you three different ways that you can color just using your ink pads that you already have. A lot of times we don't have coloring mediums like markers or pencils because they're pretty expensive and quite an investment. So I'm going to show you how to color with things that you probably already have as a stamper. I'm using Inked Flora Stamp and Die Set by Altenew today. It's got these really beautiful large floral images that I think will just look really beautiful. I am using my Misty to stamp that and I'm using Versafine Onyx Black Ink. I'm using Onyx Black Ink because it is a waterproof ink and I'm using a lot of water today to color with these dye inks. So I want to make sure that whatever I use won't make the ink run. For the two colors I'll be focusing on, I'll be using Flirty Fuchsia and Grass Skirt, and I'm using this Zig Blender pen. Now this is for use with water and dye based inks. You can see that the ink is clear, or what the water in the uh, pen is clear, and I'm just giving a little squeeze to my Catherine Puller ink pad, and you'll see that it transfers right there to the top of the ink pad cap, and you wanna make sure that you don't squeeze too hard, just a gentle squeeze. I'm gonna pick that up with my blender pen, and it transfers right to my cardstock. So basically, I'm using this just like a marker. You do have to go back and pick up a little bit more uh, as you're coloring, so to color this entire image would obviously take a lot more back and forth than you'll see in just the one petal that I do, but it's so cool that you can make any dye ink that you have a marker. I think that's really neat and I love having this uh, in my stash just to be able to pull it out if I want to make coordinating colors for anything. I love that I can do that with my inks. Now you'll want to go ahead and rub this off and just make sure that you get all of the ink off before you use it again on another color. So I just take a scrap piece of paper and wipe it and you'll see that most of the time the color comes right off. I have not found one yet that stays on uh, for a color dye based ink. Um, it might be like a black might stay or maybe a very dark red. I'm not 100% sure but the ones that I have used so far for florals and things like that have not stained the tip of my zig brush or my zig blender brush so now for my second way to color with your inks I'm going to be using a more of a watercolor approach but don't be scared if you're not a water colorist I am absolutely not and this couldn't be easier so I use my glass mat just to put the ink from my ink pad right onto and I use the white space just so I can uh, get a good idea of where the color is. If it's on the black, it tends to get a little uh, invisible to me. So I use that white spot there and I just pick it up with a water brush. And really it's that easy. It's just that you squeeze a little bit of water onto the ink that you've put there on the mat, pick it up with your water brush and you can go to town coloring. Now I did use some cold press watercolor paper and stamped the same images with the same Versafine Onyx black ink. And I do the same thing with grass skirt as well. To get a little bit of a darker shadow, if you wanna get a little more in depth and do a lot of shading, you can use either a uh, darker ink or you can use a lot less water. So if you were to pick it up with just the water brush being wet rather than actually squeezing water onto the ink, then you would get a darker color and you can go in with a bit of a heavier hand to make some adjustments for shading and lighting and highlights. So moving on to my third and final tip for coloring with inks today, I'm going to be using ink pad refills, and I'm basically going to be using them as liquid watercolor. So I've picked a few colors that I think will look good, and I'm dropping them right into the wells of this watercolor mixer palette. Mixer palette, sure. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and take a piece of watercolor paper and douse it in water. Normally what I would do is tape this to a board of some sort so that I can pick it up and move it around, but I don't know why I decided not to do that. And you'll see that I actually have to go back in and redo this, and I'll tell you about that in just a minute, uh, but that would have prevented that, I think. But anyway, it looks really cool when you drop the uh, paint onto a wet uh, piece of watercolor paper. It just sort of 
close out and does its own thing and I just think that it looks really beautiful and I thought it would look really cool if I embossed in gold embossing powder the very sketchy look of the florals in this uh, stamp set onto this watercolor look. So to do that I prep the same piece of watercolor uh, cardstock after I um, dry it with my heat gun and then I use Versamark ink to stamp the floral image onto the watercolor panel. I then use my heat gun again to stamp, I'm sorry, to set the gold embossing powder and I think it was a little bit wet when I decided to do that still because I got a lot of extra embossing powder so I needed to go back in and redo the floral watercolor panel before I stamped it out. So this is the uh, outcome there. So I've got these two, one in a really fun purple and then one in a nice bright red. I'm going to use the sentiment, have a lovely day, and I'm going to stamp that with this long acrylic block in VersaFine Onyx Black ink again. It's a really nice detailed ink and it works really well when stamping sentiments. So I'm just going to go ahead and speed up how I set up this card, but I'll go ahead and walk you through it a little bit uh, as it's going through. So basically I decide that I'm going to adhere these flowers with foam tape uh, at the very end. So what I wanna do is stamp the leaves that come in the stamp set beneath the flower, sort of looking like it's coming out from the flower. So I do that as well in VersaFine Onyx Black ink. Again, it gives a lot of good detail, but it also matches the black uh, in the splatter that I do around the cardstock and also the uh, sentiment that I've stamped. So after all is done, this is what I came out with. It's at a little bit of a strange angle because I wanted to try to get as much of that embossing powder shine as I could in the photo and it's so hard to do that sometimes. But anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed seeing how you can color with ink pads that you already have. I've linked all of the products used in the description as well as the coordinating blog post for this video. Thank you so much for stopping by and I will see you again very soon. Thanks so much. Bye.